Okay, so today I wanted to go over how to do subsurface scattering in Redshift. Now the model you're using shouldn't matter, but in case you want to follow along, just go to your content browser and look up Stegosaurus, and there he is. Let's jump right into it. We're going to start, go to Create, Redshift, New Standard Material. So we're going to go ahead and drop this on, and I'm just going to call this subsurface. So let's see how this looks right now. Yeah, about what you'd expect. So let's open this up. If I click on our standard material here in the newest Cinema 4D uh, 2023, you can click on this button here and pull up all of your uh, node settings. Just go ahead and scroll down until we find subsurface. And we're gonna turn the weight all the way to one, see what that does. All right, it's not looking like much. So let's make a couple changes real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the reflection roughness up a little bit, because I don't want this thing to be super reflective. First thing I wanna take a look at is under subsurface, we have color and radius. Now, when the weight is turned all the way up to one, for all practical purposes, this color is overriding your base color. So I could change this to anything I want, and you'll notice it will not change your material at all. So for now, I'm going to just set this to black. This does not matter what this is if you have your weight set all the way to one. So now I'm going to go ahead and change the color of our dinosaur. I'm going to go with like a nice blue. Something like that. So radius is actually the color of the light that is being scattered throughout the dinosaur. Right now it's white by default. And this is doing something, but it's not particularly obvious just because it's a large model. So that's where scale comes into play. So scale is how deep the light goes into your model. So if I start turning this up, so a little something there in the fins. Let's turn this up to something crazy just to get a good idea of what's going on. Let's do 10. Now we're getting this really nice translucency in the really thin parts. And so if we were to actually zoom in on this dinosaur, you can really see it in the face and on his little nubs on the back here. So 10 is way too high. So I'm going to bring that down to, let's say, 5. Okay, so we've got our colors blue and our radius is white. So if we wanted to change this, let's say the light that was scattering throughout the dinosaur was more like a green. Go ahead and change it here. There you go. So it's pretty subtle, but you can kind of see it here throughout the nose. I might even honestly take the scale down a little more. Let's say three. So let's give this like a really rich green color just to really see that. So in general, I mean, that's just about it. If you want, you can adjust the weight, turn this up and down um, to affect the overall weight of the effect of subsurface scattering. And that might be useful for what you need. But personally, I think it's just a little more intuitive to just not even worry about base color and just turn this weight all the way up to one rather than, you know, turning the whole effect up or down uniformly across the model to just adjust your scale. You're more realistically controlling just how deep the light penetrates in the model. If you hit this to zero, then it effectively just turns the effect off. So one specific use case that you might want for adjusting the weight rather than adjusting the scale is if you wanted to add some unevenness into the scattering. So I'm just going to add a uh, Maxon noise. I'm going to feed that into here, go to subsurface. You cannot feed a noise into the radius, so we're going to feed it into the weight. That's going to do a bunch of crazy things. And then I'm also going to go ahead and grab a ramp. This will just make it a little easier to control it uh, from here. Uh, so first thing, I want to adjust the base color. I just want these two colors to be the same, so I'm just going to eye drop this blue over here. Right away, you can kind of see something going on. So now it has a little bit of unevenness. So let's just, you know, make that a little less exaggerated. So go to our ramp, turn this to like, let's say 70%. If you want to isolate like what this is doing, you can hit this little S key here, or this S button here. And you can see exactly what that looks like. And I think even looking at this, I want to make this a little larger. So let me scale this up to uh, overall scale. Let's take this to like two. Go ahead and then solo that. So yeah, it's pretty subtle, but it adds a little bit of unevenness, especially in this really thin parts that I think can add a lot of realism to your render. Anisotropy, I'm probably saying that wrong. Um, essentially what you're doing is you're saying, hey, was the light rays bounce through this thing? When you're done bouncing, do I want you to go towards the camera or away from the camera? And negative is away from the camera, positive is towards the camera. What that means practically is that if you were to make this a more negative value, it's going to feel thicker and more dense, and then positive values are going to feel, you know, lighter and, you know, more translucent. Leave your mode on random walk is fine, and then samples fine. Changing uh, include mode from only self to all objects might be useful if you have a lot of intersecting geometry. If you're having anything, any weird results because you have a complex shape intersecting with other complex shapes, then uh, maybe try setting this to all objects. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope that helps somebody.